Welcome back. We are going to do an exercise. We are going to sign up for an Oracle Cloud infrastructure account. This account provides you with US dollars 300 in credit to try out the cloud. You get around 30 days to try the cloud. You do provide your credit card, but your credit card won't be charged unless you go beyond the 30 days. Okay, in order to sign up, please log into cloud.oracle.com forward slash try it. The free trial provides US $300 in credit for 30 days use only. Make sure to plan the lab so it can be completed in 30 days so you do not incur any charges. Also, if your schedule does not permit you to finish all the labs in 30 days, don't worry. From my experience, the charges you'll incur would be very nominal for the type of work or exercises we are going to perform for the lab. Students who are not in the geographical areas where free, free trial is an option, don't worry, I'll try to get as many details in the videos and the slides. If you move down, you could see the examples what you can do with the Oracle Cloud and with this free credit. You can work on compute instances, storage, and network resources. For developers, you can use Java, Node.js, Python, PHP, and Ruby. You also have access to databases like Oracle, MySQL, NoSQL, and also some open source databases. Further, you can also use the free credits, databases, compute, storage, container, database backup, Revelo, API flat platform, identity management, virtual cloud network, fast connect, load balancing, Internet of Things. So we will use this credits for many of this. To get started, we will click on the create a free account. This should bring you up to this sign up page. You will add your personal account name. This is going to be your tenancy name. So everything would be followed by your tenancy name so name it in such a way so it's easier to remember and easier to use for data regions select the one which is closest to you uh, I, I would say the best option would be North America if possible if not EMEA Europe Middle East Asia and definitely if that is not an option select the one which is closest to your region. You would provide an email address, first name, last name, make sure you provide an actual email address because that's how they're going to communicate with you. You provide the address, city, state, zip code. This is very important in order to verify that you are an actual person they are going to send you a verification code which you need to plug in here once you receive to verify your identity. They will take your credit card. They will not charge your credit card until the 30 days period is over or if you use the $300 in credit before the 30 days duration. Finally, you select the terms and condition you accept them and you complete one thing you should keep in mind when you click on this data regions you should be able to see so for our training we are look, going to look at infrastructure as a service so it's very important you look at the drop down and select infrastructure as a service for, for our training 
and you can see for us combining all the regions here they provide the services what we are looking for for the purpose of this exercise i would suggest you select north america if you can So finally, when your registration is complete, you should receive an email. You will be provisioned a tenancy, which is based on the name, the cloud name you put here. Oracle will send you a notification email and with instructions to log in. So the tenancy is provided. You use the link to get to the sign, sign in page. Here you can sign it two ways. You can sign in as a federated account, which basically is, is the default when you first sign up. So the service is going to be Oracle Identity Cloud Service. Once the tenancy is provisioned, your email address would be the administrator for this cloud infrastructure. You can sign in this way or you can also sign in as a non-federated account where you would put your username and the password. I've already signed in so basically it's going to take me to the to the console. You will use this console to access the OCI. So basically you've got the identity management, you've got compute, you've got databases, networking, storage, audit. We're gonna use all the services for our training. So the console is basically a web-based user interface that you uh, use to access and manage Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Services. The supported browsers include the latest version of Google, Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, and Internet Explorer 11. So you use the service steps basically in order to get to the resources you want to use. There is also a link to the documentation. There are developer tools which will go into command line interface, SDK, data transfer utility, uh, how, how to create keys to log in remotely to the compute nodes, the API, and this other services which we'll be working on. Security credentials, regions, domains, identifiers, tags, block volume, types of volume, how to create them, start them up, stop, terminate those, same thing with compute nodes, data transfer utility, databases, exadata, bare metal virtual machines, how to migrate your existing databases to the cloud, what techniques can you use. This is going more into the advanced, but we will cover all those. We'll talk about the DNS services, file storage, how to create, manage, mount them. Identity management, will learn how to create users, groups, dynamic groups, compartments, policies, load balancing, how we would load balance your application load between uh, two ADs, availability domains, or you can also do it within regions. Networking, how we, we will build a virtual cloud network and the components needed to build that. Object storage, we'll see how to create the buckets, uh, how to manage objects, and how to upload data to these buckets. So 
So basically the console password is signed into the web console the first time with one time password and then change the password. So this one time password is good for seven days. If you don't use it, you have to request another password or unless there is another administrator, they can reset the password for you. So in the next lecture, we'll start looking into different exercises, how to, to use the console.